the thistle and the cedar. In our last story, we met the prophet Jonah, who refused to obey God's calling because of his prejudice against Nineveh. However, God used Jonah's life as a lesson, a lesson in caring about the lost, a lesson about humility and responding to the voice of God, a lesson on what truly matters. Now we revisit the tragic story of kings. In this story, King Amaziah assumes the throne of Judah. Although he begins his reign righteously, doubt and bitterness consumes him. Eventually, he raises his sword against an enemy too formidable for him, inspired by the book of Second Chronicles. Hello, I'm Pastor Jack Graham with today's episode of the Bible in a Year podcast. In our last episode, we saw how God spared Nineveh from destruction after they repented from evil and turned their hearts to the one true God. Jonah, who had reluctantly delivered God's word to this pagan city, was angered by God's mercy toward them. But God used a plant and a worm to show Jonah that the thousands of souls in Nineveh were actually precious to God. Today, we'll return to Judah to hear of the reign of King Amaziah. He starts off well, but soon turns away from God to doubts, resentment, and pride. His pride would ultimately lead to his demise as he engaged an enemy far too powerful to defeat. So, once again, let's listen to God's Word. King Joash of Judah returned to the dust, as is the way of all men. However, his demise was more brutal than most. He was assassinated by his own officers on the road to Silla. His blood covered the streets, and his reign ended in shame. His son was twenty-five at the time, and was soon after named King of Judah. Amaziah was a young man, but filled with promise. He began his reign with ambition to break the cycle of his forefathers. He pursued God, he uplifted the poor and needy, and he established justice in the land of Judah. He did what was right in the sight of God. But there was still a lingering apathy resting at the bottom of Amaziah's heart. Something kept him from truly pursuing God as David once did. Amaziah knew that his father had been assassinated by the officers of Judah. Without warning, Amaziah sent men to ambush them and kill each man who played a part in killing his father. An eye for an eye, Amaziah thought. It was the custom for many kings to kill the families of traitors as well. But Amaziah refused to enact that sort of cruelty. He knew what was commanded of God in the law, saying, "'Fathers shall not die because of their children,' nor children because of their fathers. But everyone is punished for their own sins. Only a few months into Amaziah's reign, there was a threat coming in from the nation of Seir. Amaziah was proactive in responding to this threat. He gathered every elder from each tribe of Judah to strategize. From them, he had 300,000 mighty men, young men from Judah who were eager to fight and defend their country. To further add to his massive army, he hired 100,000 mercenaries from Israel to bolster his army. Amaziah was preparing his men for battle. The camp was bustling with activity. The sound of iron being forged and swords being sharpened filled the camp as Amaziah walked through. As he was picking up his armor, a man of God interrupted him. The man looked at the king with wise and understanding eyes. The man smiled as he gestured for the king to sit. Amaziah respected the prophets of God, so was intent on hearing what he had to say. My king, you do not need the extra mercenaries from Israel. They have rejected the Lord, and God is in the process of refining them. The king's face was grim at hearing those words. He knew he needed more men to win the upcoming battle. The prophet sensed this and encouraged the king further. Do not be afraid. Do you think God will send you into your demise? Surely he is with you before your enemy. The king was not entirely reassured. What of the money I already paid them? Should I just waste that? Does not the Lord own all things? He can give you much more than one hundred talents in return for your faithfulness? The prophet responded. So the king did as the prophet asked. He sent away the mercenaries back to Israel. 
but he was met with great anger and conflict from the Israelites. They returned home with a deep anger in their hearts, yet the Lord blessed Amaziah's faithfulness. He marched into battle, short 100,000 men, but filled with courage from God. Amaziah lifted up his sword and rode into battle with his men behind him. The warriors of Seir ran towards them, and the two armies collided with steel and bone. Amaziah's young arm slashed through the enemy forces. Blood filled the valley of salt and poured out like a stream. Over 10,000 men fell at the hand of Judah before the people of Seir surrendered. Another 10,000 were captured alive and brought to the edge of a mountain. With decisive force, the men were pushed over to their doom. Their skulls cracked on the rocks below. Amaziah and his men cheered in victory. Their war cries filled the air and echoed for all the surrounding nations to hear. Joy filled their hearts as they ventured back to Judah. A tired smile was on Amaziah's face as he rode back with elation. However, his smile grew dim when he saw smoke rising from the distance. Amaziah and his men rode quickly towards the smoke and saw flames rising from the outer cities of Judah. The men's hearts began to break as they saw every city from Samaria to Beth Horon struck down. Three thousand people had been killed at the hands of the Israeli mercenaries. Amaziah's heart was broken. A subtle bitterness swelled up in his heart towards God. He had sent the men away with the promise that God would bless him. But here he stood among the burnt cities of Judah. God had not met his expectations. And although Amaziah would not say so outwardly, his heart was calloused towards him. Amaziah sat in the storehouse where all the spoils of war sat. In their victory against Seir, they had collected their idols and false gods. Amaziah stared at the carved images before him. They were gods made from man. They were gods of carnal pleasures and selfish desires. They were easy gods to obey, since they allowed men and women to give in to their own selfish pleasures. Amaziah got up from his seat and picked up one of the idols. He held it in his hand. He was drawn to it. A deep-seated bitterness in his heart boiled over. Amaziah placed the carved image on an altar nearby and bowed to it. Perhaps this god would not disappoint him. Amaziah was caught in the cycle of his forefather Solomon. The lewd and exotic idols enticed him. Foreign philosophy and pagan worship wrapped him up like a woman of the night. He was lured in and intoxicated by the rush of idol worship. All the while, God's heart broke at his servant's downfall. The Lord sent another prophet to speak truth to the king. The prophet came to the throne room of Amaziah. He was not his normal self. The prophet could see a hidden weariness in his eyes. He began to show symptoms of madness. My king, the prophet said quietly, why have you run after the gods of people that clearly care very little for their own? They are not compassionate or merciful. They gladly sacrifice their own and... The king raised his hand to silence the prophet. He stood from his throne and stepped down towards him. The look in his eyes sent a chill down the prophet's spine. Am I mistaken? Have you somehow been appointed as the royal counselor without my knowledge? He asked. The prophet opened his mouth to respond, but was abruptly interrupted again. Stop! The king shouted. Before you are struck down! The prophet was flustered at first but then stood upright. He was a child and servant of the living God. He would not be intimidated by a mentally and emotionally unstable king. The prophet began to depart, but said one final thing as he left. God is determined to thwart you before you corrupt the rest of Judah. God will destroy you for not listening to my counsel. The king slumped back in his throne, determined to regain control of his emotions. Amaziah was feeling bold after his victory over Seir, and decided to march against the neighboring nation of Israel as revenge for his fallen cities. Amaziah was beginning to be consumed with pride. Just as the ancient people who built the Tower of Babel, Amaziah began to overreach in search of power. 
Let us meet face to face, Amaziah sent to King Joash. This was a bold challenge, for Israel under Jehoahaz had amassed a great army, greater than that of Judah. King Joash calmly replied to the new king with a story. A small thistle in Lebanon sent word to a mighty cedar, saying, Let us marry our son and daughter as equals. But a wild beast passed by and destroyed the tiny thistle. Its small leaves and frail twigs were crushed under its foot, but the beast could not crush the strong cedar. The king of Israel's words were strong and wise. In his letter he laid out a warning for the young king of Judah. The letter continued, saying, Your heart is filled with pride after your defeat over Seir. But you should stay at home. Why are you provoking evil against yourself? Joash's words only fueled Amaziah's anger. Though he was not aware of it, God was laying a trap for Amaziah. He would allow the young king to walk right into the consequence of his own pride. The two kings rode out against one another. They met at the valley of Beth Shemesh, on the outskirts of Judah. Amaziah raised his sword and ran into battle with his men at his side. He was confident, brave, and filled with the pride of youth. He should have stayed home. Joash unleashed a fury unlike Amaziah had ever seen. A new wave of Israelite soldiers flooded the battlefield with every passing hour. Amaziah's brutish confidence was wiped away under the boot of Joash and his army. Amaziah saw King Joash fighting and pursued him. He ran with his sword high in the air. He was met with a swift kick to the chest and fell back. He dropped his sword, and before he could reach for it, he was kicked in the jaw. Amaziah writhed in pain. His mouth was filled with blood. Joash picked him up by his breastplate and threw him into a group of his guards. They beat him and tied him to a horse. The battle had been easily won, and every man of Judah fled back to his home. Amaziah was taken into the heart of Judah. He was paraded around Jerusalem as a captive. Then, Joash had his men destroy part of the wall of Jerusalem. The bricks crumbled to the floor along with Amaziah's dignity. Joash sent his men into the house of God and seized the gold and silver. He raided Amaziah's home and stole all his treasure. Lastly, Joash took captives. Women and children were carted away like cattle. The king of Judah crumbled to his knees. Joash spat on the ground beside Amaziah and left him to soak in his own shame. After witnessing the king's shame, there was a conspiracy to kill him. So Amaziah fled to Lachish and spent years hiding in exile. Eventually, he was found and put to death immediately. It was a shameful end to a shameful life. Amaziah allowed doubt to plague his mind. Instead of seeking God in his pain and questioning, he wrote him off and pursued other gods. His story is not unlike the story of mankind. For all of human history, man has struggled for closeness to God. They seek to understand him and are disappointed when he does not meet their expectations. One day, a true king would rise up to restore a close relationship between man and God. But for now, the struggle continues. We begin today's passage following the death of Joash of Judah, who was killed by his own men as he traveled the road to Silla. His son, Amaziah, was young, only 25 when his father died, and he became king of Judah. It all started off well. Amaziah did many good things, seeking to do right in the eyes of the Lord and restore justice to the land. He sought to deal with the traitors who killed his father, and he put them to death. But rather than wipe out their entire families, including their children, Amaziah killed only the guilty, obeying God's law. There was truly great potential in this new king, but at the same time, a darkness in his heart held him back. Soon there was an enemy threatening the peace. The nation of Seir was preparing to attack, so he gathered the elders and assembled the troops. Then he hired soldiers from Israel mercenaries to fight with them. It was a sound military strategy, but before they went to battle, one of God's prophets appeared to speak with the king. 
He delivered a word from the Lord saying the king did not need the 100,000 mercenaries from Israel. Israel was a nation in turmoil and God was not with them. Sometimes the plan that makes the most sense may not be the plan God has for you. Those may be confusing moments that cause you to wonder if God will still provide or protect. Surely Amaziah wondered the same. So the prophet assured him, saying in 2 Chronicles 25 and verse 8, But go, act, be strong for the battle. Why should you suppose that God will cast you down before the enemy? For God has power to help or to cast down. He was being told to trust in God's power, not his own, not Israel's army. Only trust God and be strong for the battle and obey him. Echoes of the words God spoke to Joshua when he became the leader of God's people. But despite lingering doubts, Amaziah sent the mercenaries home. The Israelites were angry even though they had already been paid. But Amaziah obeyed God and went without them. And just as God promised, he was with the king and gave him victory, even with a shorthanded army. The king and his men returned home confident and victorious, only to find that the Israelite warriors had attacked several cities, setting fires, and killing more than 3,000 people. Why had God allowed this to happen, the king must have wondered. He had been obedient, and yet disaster came. And so, because God didn't meet his expectations, Amaziah became angry at God. His anger turned to resentment. Obedience to God will always be the right path, but it will not always be a peaceful or easy path. Evil is still very real in the world, and until the Lord Jesus returns, tragedies are going to happen, even to the most faithful followers of the Lord. In those moments, we can, like King David, rest in God's goodness and find comfort and healing in Him, or we can become bitter like Amaziah and give up on God. Amaziah, in his anger and hurt, decided he would rather trust in the idols that he could make, not the God who made him. These false gods gave him license to do as he pleased because he felt that he could control his own little gods. But as all who give in to sin and idolatry and disobedience discover, Amaziah became controlled by the pleasure of the gods he bowed to. God sent a prophet to talk sense into the king, but he was too far gone. He would not listen. He was filled with pride, and in his arrogance, he decided he could face off against Israel and her army. King Joash of Israel received his challenge and replied with a parable about a thistle that wanted to defeat a mighty cedar. In other words, he was warning Amaziah to back down. He was outmatched, overmatched. But Amaziah would not listen to reason, and God was giving him over to his pride. Defeat came swiftly to Judah as ways of Israelites overwhelmed them. Amaziah was taken captive and subjected to ridicule, paraded through his own capital as a prisoner. Humiliated, King Amaziah had to flee his kingdom to avoid being killed by his own people. But even then, rather than turn to God and repent, he clung to his idols, the false gods he could mold and understand but never could truly depend upon to save him. His life shows the tragic effects of pride and trying to force the hand of God to meet our expectations rather than trusting His plans and His destiny for our lives. Dear God, we know that Your ways are higher than our ways. And while we do not always understand why You are doing what You do, we do know that You are God, that You are in control, that You are on the throne of our lives when we trust in You. So, Lord, we know that what you do is always good, it is always best. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Pastor Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. Download the Pray.com app and make prayer a priority along with Bible study in your life. And if you enjoyed this podcast, be sure and share it with someone you know because it can truly make a difference in someone else's life. And if you want more resources on how you can know the Bible and live the Christian life, contact me at jackgraham.org. That's jackgraham.org for many resources that will help you in your walk with God. God bless you.